Welcome to another episode of Economic News. Today, we will discuss the US hitting the debt ceiling limit and what exactly that means. The basics of hitting the debt ceiling means that the US government has already borrowed as much as they have agreed upon. This means that the US has acquired a debt of $31.4 trillion dollars And now, it has to decide what happens next. There are two options. The debt ceiling is raised so that the US government can take on even more debt. Or secondly, if they don't bump up the limit, the US will no longer be able to borrow more money and will thereby default on its obligations and would no longer be able to pay its own bills. The US hitting the debt ceiling, however, is by far no new phenomenon. Since 1960, there have been 78 revisions on the debt limit, with three revisions to raise, extend, or revise the definition of the debt limit within just the past six months. Given all this, why is it such a big deal now? Well, because deciding what to do now depends on the lawmakers, and there's a lot of tension going on at the moment. The Congress is made up of the Senate and the House of Representatives. While the Senate is controlled by the Democrats, the House of Representatives is held by the Republicans as of the 3rd of January 2023. With Republicans calling for spending cuts, this leads to the possible outcome that no new agreement is reached and an increase of debt ceiling is not attained. So this time, politicians may delay any decision-making and potentially lead the US to intentionally default for the first time in its history. This is a big deal. The US has a great reputation in the world economy exactly because it never defaulted before. This meant the US was known as a risk-free safety asset in the world economy. If it does default, it may pull the US creditworthiness into question, creating instabilities in the market and its credit rating would be downgraded. While the Treasury can take some extraordinary measures to buy more time for the politicians, and keep paying the bills, it cannot do so forever. Defaulting would mean that the government has to find ways to make interest payments while other obligations go unpaid. Those that get sidelined first would most likely be things such as defense contractor payments, social security checks, and salaries of government employees, including the military. So definitely not a good situation to be in. But more than that, since the credit rating would have decreased, the rates would be raised on other types of debts, such as mortgages and auto loans, to account for additional risk. This, added to the increased volatility of the stock market, may make for difficult times, as investors sell off stock due to the increase in security surrounding the American economy. These effects would likely be felt outside of the American borders as well. On the global financial markets, the US debt is heavily traded as it has traditionally been viewed as a low risk. Once that changes, it could alter the US position on the international market and the worth of its debt. The currency may weaken and borrowing costs would spike as the US would have lost some of its trustworthiness on the global market. This has never happened before, so the US defaulting would be a huge deal, not just for the US, but also for its citizens and the global economy as a whole as one of the most stable countries would be showing signs of volatility. So far, the Senate and House of Representatives have always managed to reach an agreement to prevent this from happening. With increased polarization in American politics, however, the danger of defaulting becomes an increasing threat. Thank you for watching Economic News here at Rebel Economics. In case you're interested in more quick economic news, then keep watching some of the other videos on the screen. And if you want to help us out, then please like and subscribe. See you in the next one and have a nice day.